and welcome back to our build of Queen Mary 2. And in this episode, by rights, we should be starting on step 16, uh, having just finished putting together uh, the foc'sle. Now in step 16, we'd be fitting these parts here um, to um, the promenade deck that we've already fitted. And then this deck fits on top above that. Um, but because we've already fitted um, a part J40, which we should fit in step 24, but we, we needed to uh, fit it um, at the front to make sure that all the filling and bits and pieces was done. Um, we can't do this just yet because in step um, 24, we actually fit these parts. Now the kit is designed um, for these parts to slot into place but as you slot them into place part J40 then goes in after because we've already fitted that we can't do that so these now have to slide into place and they won't slide in if we've already fitted these parts so we're building a little bit out of sequence here because of uh, some decisions we made earlier in the build so um, it's important to point that out because if you're following the build and you do what I do uh, and then revert back to the instructions, you will not be able to fit these. Um, so we need to be able to slide them into place before we do this back end, which means we need to focus on the clean up of these parts. So the, these are the two largest and possibly most involved parts in the whole build because we've got all these rooms that need something doing with the floor. Um, I show you. We've got three, four maybe different types of rooms in here um, and we have different types of flooring. So in the little single rooms we have flooring like we've already put in in the rooms that we installed in the lower hall section. In the one and a half size rooms um, and the double rooms then they have uh, wood laminate flooring in place um, so my intention is to use the scraps from around our um, wooden flooring we've got plenty so I'm hoping we've got um, enough to be able to do all the room all these rooms I'm hopeful that we have at least so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting all of these out and making sure they fit before I stick any of them down, making sure I've got enough. So that's one job that we've got to do. Um, the other thing we've got to do is correct all of these. So as you can see, we've got these elliptical recesses. Um, and on the actual ship, those are vents. So there's all sorts of uh, ducting and air vents um, venting out through those so you've got a louvre type um, vent going on over there which is stainless steel but they should be flush to the bulkhead not countersunk so they all need filling um, and then we need to um, deal with putting them back on so whether that is creating a paint mask or um, cutting out some tape in elliptical I don't know so I'm gonna to have to experiment and play around and see how I how I can make these flush and still be elliptical uh, and even do a want to um, so uh, there's something to think about there um, we've got a couple of um, raised doors that we need to remove so that we can put our own doors on um, as you saw on Stephen's uh, deck walk, we have a number of wooden doors to go on and we've only got one raised door on here. Um, so, yeah, so we've got all of that to do. Um, and then we've also got some flash and some cleanup to do. So I think my process is actually to work out what I'm going to do with those. So if I can't come up with a satisfactory solution, what we'll end up doing is just painting them in the um, dual aluminium colour that we have um, and leaving it at that. But we absolutely don't want to leave them white. 
um, and then gonna go back through Stevens, walk around and see what else we've got in the way of um, signs and bits and pieces that might need to go in here. I think we've got clocks as well, um, which go on with photo etch. So I, I think the process, once these parts are done, is to not actually put the glass balconies in until after this is fitted. And we also want to fit this before we fit the rest of the wooden decks. So uh, there's lots to do as always. So I'm going to crack on in the first instance with cleaning these parts up and then I'll have a look at what we're going to do with these. Sometimes um, making models that you're filming to put on a YouTube channel dictates that you have to do things slightly differently than you might ordinarily do and we are now at that point in our Queen Mary 2 build. So if we look at all of these steps here, they're basically doing the same thing. Uh, we are painting all this and then we're putting all of these uh, balconies in, um, which are glass and need painting um, with the, uh, the legs are one colour and the um, uh, bar at the top is a different colour. And there's tons and tons and tons of them. There's tons of rooms that all need painting, the floor putting in, floor painting. So we have huge amounts of work to do that is monotonous and time consuming. And that doesn't make for a good video. So in an attempt to have enough content and keep my videos to, to schedule of every other week, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing this in the background, but for the purposes of the video, we're going to jump ahead and do some other bits. Um, what we can do is focus on this area here, this deck here, and this deck here. So there's some work we can do on these before they're fitted in. So um, we can start doing that so that we've got some bits to break it up and we can also look at the uh, bridge and we can even if we want to get ahead here and build up some of these superstructures um, and, and just mix it about a little bit um, so that we've got some bits built up ready to go because if you look at the funnel for example there's quite a bit of structure there that can be built up and then it just gets plopped on, on on the end. So we've got some bits and pieces that we can do. So that is the plan. Um, so in addition to uh, all of these rooms that have got to be done, I've also got all of these little stanchions and the glazing to do around here. So lots and lots to think about. So we're gonna start with this deck here and um, also the um, bulkheads that go underneath that deck with the windows in, we need to look at those. Right, let's consider these parts at the bottom uh, first. We've got uh, this um, part here, which will go underneath this deck, um, like so. Um, and this in itself isn't too bad. We need to have, um, we need to glaze it and that glazing needs to be smoky. Um, the, the biggest issue with this is that the um, doors here, it, they've got two single doors on, and actually these are double doors when you look at pictures, they're much wider. So we need to take those off, so um, that's the first thing we need to consider. So uh, I'm just going to rough them off. There we go, we've removed that now, so that, that is all we need to do with that part. Just remove the doors for now, and we'll deal with that when we come to uh, glue these two into place. Um, these need more work. Um, on the actual ship, you've got a frame around the outside of the window. Now, that's, uh, that's just too small for us to emulate, but they are also divided in half. There's a bar between them, and that we can do. So we're going to get some micro strip and uh, glue that into the windows. So this is 0 0.030 square micro strip that we're going to use for these windows. And when I put that across, that looks to be 
in proportion and do what we want to do, which is divide that window into half. Um, so I'm just going to measure how long we need. Uh, so it looks to me to be three millimeters. So first thing I'm going to do, you notice I'm putting it on the grid on the cutting mat. Um, first thing I'm going to do is square the end off. is easy to do on the grid as long as you're cutting again on the grid line you you know your square or nearest damn it anyway right three millimeters I just want to check that that three millimeters works um, we go and cut a load of them. Okay, so three millimeters appears to be just slightly too long. So it'll need a, a very gentle sand. So let's do that. Well, this is going to be tricky, I think, but once we get into the groove, it will be about right. And what we'll do is once we've got this the right length, we'll use it to cut all the others rather than measuring them. I'm actually going to just trim a little bit off. This is the point where we make it too short enough to start again. So that's in. Okay, so we've got that right now. So we know we can cut to length against that. So my next task is just to mark off the center line on the back of these windows. So each window is Four millimeters near as damn it. So if I'm out the two millimeter point on each one, I can line that up and I know uh, very quickly where my center point is. Okay. So I can now find my center point every time we put one of those in. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, so we need 22 braces. I'll cut them and then I'll Very simple them. process to quickly cut these 22 uh, pieces of rod. All I've done is put um, the uh, first piece that we've got to the correct length on a piece of uh, masking tape and then I can put my rod up to it I know that nothing's going to move around. I can cut the piece that I want off, remove it with my uh, tweezers. So we not cut that one all the way through. It's all done live. And just keep going. Now the tendency is you end up cutting some of these slightly longer, that's better than slightly shorter. Right, I'll carry on and I'll see you in a mo. So I've done my first set of windows and I put them together, you can see the difference that we're making. So they all should have that little bar in 
and so I'm quite happy with that we'll carry on and get the rest of these done okay that is our windows complete I'm happy with that that looks much more like the real thing um, and we've got that bit done so these parts are finished and so my next thing of note is that we've got some ejector pin marks here um, and here which are outside of uh, where this is going to build up so if we if we put these parts on like so you can see we've got a jet pin mark that's actually going to get in the way of fitting that properly anyway so we just need to remove those um, so that is my um, next job they're, they're, they're all raised thankfully so we don't have filling to do just a bit of sanding Right, I'll get rid of these and then I'll come back to you. Right then, with the underside sorted, we're now looking at the upper side. We've already sanded down the deck, ready for the wood deck. Um, the pool doesn't need much doing to it. Um, these two areas here, um, firstly the short shot. I don't know if you can see that, if I change the light a little bit. Um, but they're also a little bit too tall um, when I look at photographs they need to come down about a millimetre or, or a bit less so we need to sand those down and hopefully that will deal with a short shot and if not uh, we might have to put a little ring or something on there to sort that out otherwise I'm leaving this layout as it is just going to paint it up uh, and remove the ridges where we've got railing to go then we have this part that goes in um, to form this rear bulkhead at the back of the deck uh, and we'll have a little bit of deck that goes over there, not much, and these staircases disappear into there. Now I'm not going to replace the staircases with, with etch, uh, we're just going to leave them as they are. Uh, simply paint them in the, in the um, grey that we're using, uh, the, the, the pale grey, um, but we have um, some issues with this part here and I'd like to remove these actually and replace them so we're gonna fit the wood dry fit the wood deck in a minute and see what would happen if I took these off and put plastic card in because they are a bit thick and they're also triangular so that's one thing to look at in a minute the other big piece of work we've got to do on this deck is here uh, this way you've got a cut out here there's actually a bar um, which isn't depicted at all on the model um, so it's a, it's a, a nice um, wooden bar actually so I'm going to try and emulate that in real wood um, it's called the terrace pool bar so we need to try and build that in there and then this part here the windows um, roughly in the right positions but the um, the little plastic um, bars that divide it into multiple windows are just way too thick so we could cut them out and replace them with some micro strip which would make them thinner but I think it's going to be quicker um, just to actually get in there and scrape them and get them a bit thinner we've got flash in one of these anyway that we need to sort so uh, we can do all of that at the same time so we've got that to do as well so let's start with getting the wood deck out and seeing how that's going to fit and what's the impact of moving that so we continue our tour of Queen Mary 2 and we're at the very aft end of the ship on deck 3 and this is the nightclub called G32. G32 was the code name or contract number for the ship at the French shipyard before she was given the name Queen Mary II. And the room is meant to look like an industrial scene of the ship under construction. That's the, the general idea has a mezzanine level accessed by two sets of stairs, <coughs> large bar, 
and the dance floor here on the port side it's quite a high room as you can see and this is open into the very very small hours of the morning each day so this is right at the very aft end as i say of deck three then we're going to move forward we'll come through the port side entrance doors <coughs> there's a small lobby with uh, toilet facilities and we enter the ballroom or queen's room and this is the largest ballroom at sea has the largest dance floor that can you can see there in the middle the stage with the great arch is uh, reminiscent of the hollywood bowl <coughs> and you see these raised areas allowing good views from each side across the ballroom and this is used for afternoon tea which is a canard tradition scones sandwiches pastries and of course tea is served here every afternoon gets very very crowded because it's so popular in normal times outside of covid there would be the captain's welcome aboard parties in here he would normally host three of those one for the first sitting britannia restaurant one for the second sitting and one for the grill room guests and this room is uh, sized to allow those respective groups to have room to enjoy that and the captain would introduce his senior staff members bring them up onto the stage so it's a very grand space very much liked on board Queen Mary 2 and we're actually above the four pods here at the aft end of the ship at the present moment in time we're crossing the Atlantic and we're doing about uh, 18 knots on our way to Barbados so we move out of the Queen's room moving forward into the stairway lobby area before we enter the stairway d lobby we'll take you down these steps to one of the great models on board queen mary 2 and we're actually down at this level on the opposite side of the ship. Now, originally, this was a walkway through, um, hidden between levels in the dining room. It allowed people to walk through without entering the dining room. But they've taken one of the two access walkways and converted it into single cabins. So this is cabins on the port side now. On the starboard side, the opposite side, there's the art gallery, and that is now the main thoroughfare to get through from the forward part of the ship to the Queen's room without going through the Britannia restaurant. So here we are at the D, or the aftermost passenger staircase, and we can see here the plan. Here is G32. The nightclub, the Queen's room where we've just been, the step down to the hidden passageway at what was through the dining room. This one here still exists. That's the art gallery. So we're going to the upper level of Britannia, the main dining room, and then we'll move out through the ship Here's the D staircase, three 
lifts or elevators and the artwork there on the ceiling or the bulkhead rather so let's move forward into the main dining room and this is a most wonderful space on board the ship incredible and the hidden walkway I spoke about runs underneath these tiered levels so this upper level isn't used for breakfast but here's the main dining room the captain's table the big dome that should change colour according to whether it's day or night getting ready here to serve breakfast <clears throat> so we move round to the centre position where at formal dinners a trio would play And it's worth remembering this dining room serves all the standard cabins so it's a tremendous space to eat on board the ship and the tapestry at the end showing Queen Mary II arriving in New York so I'm just trying to fit in the deck I'm not sitting it down properly because this is very very thin flimsy this edge and I don't want to um, uh, take the um, material off around it until the last minute when we're about to lay it but uh, what I can do is just drive this bit of deck in well actually we'll put our part in as well uh, and the deck fits absolutely lovely it's going to look splendid that uh, now what they've done if you look they have cut little uh, semicircles around the ends and you've got a nice cutout that fits around it. Now on the actual ship there's probably um, a bit of a gap between the end of the deck and the start of the, um, uh, the these little braces. Um, so I think we could do one of two things here. We could either thin them down so that we lose the triangular plastic or we could cut them off and replace them with some um, plastic card and I think what we might do is try thinning them down first and then if we're not happy go with the plastic card so always good to try all your options and, and uh, explore every possible option first so difficult to do this on camera because I'm not in a natural position I'm not even using <laughs> the correct hand because I can't get in well you get the idea but I'm going to do it off camera so you can see I've just cut away the back area here that that just allows me to get in with a emery board uh, and finish it. I don't know about you, but I think that being thinner looks so much better than the original triangular part. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm just dry fitting these um, structures and they all appear to fit actually uh, really quite nicely. So I can't see that we're gonna have a fit problem when we come to glue them in. Um, 
what I want to do is just paint them before they go in, um, which will just make life um, easier. Also, there is um, a handrail to go along here as well. So we need to put that on in the same way as we did um, uh, at the bow end of the deck. Um, so we've got that to do. Um, and obviously, putting these in now would restrict access to putting in our little uh, windows. So what we're going to do is put those in before we put these in. Now, um, I have managed to damage my wooden deck inadvertently for here. So I have a replacement on order. Um, and I don't want to fit the rest of the wooden deck until that arrives. So I've got time to mess around with this. Um, what I do want to do, however, is just check the fit of the upper deck so I've got an understanding of, of what's coming my way. So we'll just put these back in loosely. So this goes in like so. There's a little cutout there, which is for this little half moon piece of deck. So fit there seems to be pretty good. Bearing in mind that our uh, structure underneath is loose that actually fits all quite nice and tight so um, but you can see what I mean about us having an issue with the bulkhead um, in fact here the bulkhead is finishing before you get to this bit of railing so I need to look at pictures of that we've got a bar to put in there um, which I'm probably going to put in after we've fitted the deck. Uh, so we just need to see how these deck, these bulkheads terminate. Okay, so I'm happy now to glue that in place. Um, that will allow us then to start sorting out the, the gaps and bits that we've got. Okay, so with our windows in, uh, next thing we want to think about is the pool. Um, so we've got three colours that we really need for the pool. Um, we've got, let me just get something to point with. We've got um, an upper surface here that is a sort of deck tan colour. So I'm going to use um, our uh, deck tan paint for that. These surfaces here are, are a wood colour that needs to match the deck. So we'll come back to that. Um, I need to uh, look at uh, the paint and whether I need to mix paint or not. Uh, I also need to remind myself what I've done previously. Um, and then around all the edges, the steps, um, these little areas here where we've got the shower units, they're all um, tiled in small dark blue tiles. Now, the closest colour I've got, and it's not perfect, is um, Royal Blue 70809. I don't, I can't find a perfect match. Um, it, it, it was probably a shade or two too light, so I might add a drop of 70 um, 899 dark Prussian blue to deepen it down a bit. But uh, basically, the tile colour is slightly darker than that, but brighter than that. So um, that's where I am with with that. We'll we'll we may go with that straight off. I think possibly. Um, and then we, I'm going to use 71089 light sea blue for inside the uh, pool area here. 
Now, um, I think that colour will also do for those plunge pools, but I want to try and find a better uh, a better colour. It's possible we um, we could be using 70 um, 808 blue green. It, I, I need better photographs of those two pools. I think. Anyway, my starting point for all of this is the dark blue edges. Um, so let's start with that. Okay, so after a bit of experimenting with colours, um, I've ended up getting a mix that I think is pretty close to the colour, which is this one here. Um, and it is um, four parts 70899 Prussian blue, one part 70898 dark sea blue. Um, so what the dark sea blue does is it just slightly darkens this shade um, which is much closer to what we've actually got on the on the ship so I'm going to just put a spot of thinner in there actually that was two drops and we should have enough paint there Get us through what we need here, yeah, that looks good. Okay, we're progressing nicely with the pools. Just going to take you through the, the colours. Um, we've already discussed the dark blue. Um, the main pool in the centre is um, this blue green 7808, which is a really nice match. It's just waiting for a second coat to go on there. Um, and then what I've done is I've added um, a drop of white to it, um, which has given us this paler colour for those two. Um, jacuzzis at the side um, and then the deck area on the inside we're going to do in uh, where are we um, 7986 deck tan because when you look at the pictures it's a sort of very very pale sandy grey colour so the, the deck tan is quite a good match for that I think so that's what we're going to put down um, next and then we can do the upper deck areas. Um, in terms of other painting we've got um, the showers to do and the base of the showers look like they are stainless steel to me which which would make sense so we're going to do those in stainless steel um, and then the, the staircases here 
need to be done in our uh, pale grey that we're using for the steel decks. Um, and we've, we've got a little bit of filling work to do on there. Then we're ready to put the deck overlay on and that's this deck done prior to fitting. So uh, we're getting there. Ah, that looks okay. first coat of decking down um, obviously with it being enamel it, it's a bit of time to dry um, I think that pool's looking rather classy now when you look at photographs of the pool um, it's clear that at some point the tiles were removed and they've skimmed it or something because you get a, um, a, a beige color to it now rather than this blue but doesn't that look classy in those colors looks really nice so I'm pleased with that We'll let all that dry um, and come back later. This is the spa reception area with the port side promenade down to the Corinthia lounge and onwards to the King's Court. At the forward end we have the stairs leading up to the beauty salon the A forward staircase lobbies and right forward of the superstructure is the gymnasium. <coughs> this is the forward entrance to the open deck and to the side here is the scenic elevator that runs up the side of the superstructure up to the Commodore Club. <coughs> so as we move forward through the spa area, this is the entrance area to the spa. There are the two changing rooms, male and female. And then we walk through. In here is the 
the rest lounge. <coughs> And here we have the long line of different treatment rooms. <coughs> and this leads out into the main spa area with the spa pool. sauna spaces, aromatic steam room, there is reflexology basins there, showers and there's a turbal sauna area. <laughs> So this is all located forward on deck 7, just behind the A staircase. <laughs> 